hello all so here like uh, i'm going to demonstrate how we will use the spring security like spring security 6 we can say with uh, spring boot uh, 3 and uh, java 17 so for this one i have used like uh, i have created one project using uh, spring initializer hope you all are means know like how to create project from the spring other you just need to go through from here spring initializer and uh, from here you can uh, like create your project like whatever the dependencies you want like gradle or the Marvin or anyone kotlin groovy and language also java and here we can select like uh, what version we really need so as you know the from the spring boot 3 we need minimum jdk 17 so i have used uh, spring boot 3 and uh, jdk 17 for this one and same like we need to provide some information about like what kind of metadata we need to use and artifact name and all those things and so once we created uh, like uh, click on this uh, generate uh, uh, button then it will generate one spring boot project uh, for us and then we need to import over here so then it will automatically create all the stuff related that or maybe from here also we can add some dependencies as we are going to spring dependencies um, spring security so from here we can we need to add like uh, spring secure spring web we need as we are going to expose some kind of rest api so that's why we need to the spring web and then also we need to add uh, spring security mm, so like uh, yeah spring security this we need to add and also we in in, in, in like uh, when we'll go forward then also we need to communicate with the database so also we need like uh, jpa for this one so these three dependencies we need to use so i have already created one projects as you can see over here so here already like uh, i have uh, used this one starter security starter web starter data jpa and also lombok so here lombok is not used but lombok is required to just to like uh, minimize the code we don't need to write the data setter manually it will automatically take care of it we just only need to provide the annotation for this one and for database like we need to use this one mysql connector as we are going to i am using the mysql this one for this one so this is just a kind of the brief explanation of this one so for enabling the spring security if we are adding this one then automatically the spring security is enabled and uh, like default uh, username actually basically they have the user and the password uh, they have generated one password in the when we are going to start this one then auto they have generated one password here so based on this we can like log in for actually if we try to get any kind of api we are going to use then we need to provide this kind of uh, like authentication so now like uh, how do we need to provide the configuration for this one so there is like two types of two types of uh, maybe we can do in memory authorization also or maybe the database database means we can do more flexible on this one or if we are going to like uh, in memory also we can do so i'm going so for this one i have created one configuration classes this is security config here we need to provide all kind of uh, configuration as you know before spring 3 actually spring boot 3 there is a like uh, uh, this particular kind of we need to extend something and then we need to override the class methods actually but spring boot 3 remove all those complexities and they just did the simplicity only we need to what configuration annotation this is uh, nothing just to like uh, whenever any project will be loaded then it will be load on the like initial phase and uh, web security is just to enabling the security one so that's why we need to provide this annotation and i will explain this one enable method security later on in the letter of this video so for this one if we are going to use the in memory then uh, uh, I have used uh, this uh, this one in memory for this one. I just commented as I am going to use the database one. So that's why I have commented this one. But uh, if I'm going to use, then you just need to enable this one so that the um, in memory authorization authentication will be enabled. What do we need to do? Like as you can see, we need to create the user with this one user dot with username and then password. For the password, we need to provide the encoder. You need you can see over here like password encoder over here so that particular encoder we need to provide 
and then the what is the role of it is so admin role or it's a user role that also you need to provide and then build and same and then whatever the user it is in the final in the in memory is the detail when you pass those users so that it will be add those things for as a like uh, in memory user but if you are going to um, authenticate from the database then we need to provide this is this one user info detail service and this is a kind of this is a uh, means implements this user detail this is a spring security uh, class actually as you can say yes this is the interface and it's having only one method loads by load user by username in memory user also can used and here this method load by this is a custom class that i have used and implement this one and here i have overrated this method and i just need to pass the username from the like uh, endpoint so based on this it will try to find the username from particular table and then if data is over there then uh, it will uh, return the particular user else it will throw the exception so for this one also there's a one entity i have i have generated like this is the primary key name email password and roles so from the mysql i have created one database for this one like as you can see this is this table is particular created and also i have inserted few records using the add user so i'll go detail in later okay so now come to the spring security so here in the in this bin what uh, we need to provide so we need to provide like uh, there is a okay let's go to the controller first so here i have created actually three services three endpoints one is the is running so this particular service just to check like uh, this uh, service is off or not so that's why i've just created this is the gate method so if it is a uh, running successfully then uh, like uh, uh, means it will return this string get all user it will fetch all the user from the database and uh, provide us uh, in a response and add user like it will add the user into the database so as you can see like this is the add user so uh, so actually we don't need to provide any kind of authentication for this particular methods actually so that's why we need to bypass this one so that's why we need to what you need right? like authorize HTTP or request matchers if this particular mapping is match with this one then we are permitting this one so that means when are, whenever we are going to adding the user then we don't need to provide any kind of authentication second like if then in the next if any API is started with this API then we need to provide the authenticator like if it is an add user then we will permit all means all the operations it will permit without authentication but if we are trying to access this one and the, this one then we need to provide the authentication and uh, pre-authorize that means uh, this is a thing like if uh, this particular method only accessed by the user which having the particular role role underscore user so this particular role only able to access this particular method if it is a role underscore admins then only this particular method will be accessed by this particular role I mean, suppose i am trying to access this particular method use this role then it will not we are not able to access this one and vice versa same for the other also so let's like check this one let me start this one spring security okay you can see like it's a start on the http port okay is throwing some exception string some exception let me see okay access denied okay i need to provide the password for this one so that i will provide okay password is Now we can restart it. Yeah, it started. Yeah, it's the uh, Tom K started on this eight eighty port. Okay. Now suppose <coughs> I have created like this add user. So suppose if we are trying to add one user, for example, user five user user 5 role 
password is password and the role is the role underscore now click this one user added successfully now as you can notice like for accessing this particular apis i am not providing any like authentication it will like it is not so as i mentioned earlier like uh, for this add user we don't need to provide anything because we are bypassing this one okay let's go to the database and check like if this is user is a uh, insert a successfully or not select start from user details yes okay so let's this is a start means actually inserted now suppose if we're trying to access the other endpoints let's go to the browser okay suppose if we try to use this it's running let's say it's uh, trying to like uh, providing the like uh, now we need to user 5 yes it's able to access right now try different one means try to like uh, uh, access with the admin user let's see what is it try with the admin user so this is the admin one I have created earlier the role is the role role underscore admin so let's try with this user sign in let's say like access to the is denied HTTP error for the means authentication issue so that means it will be not allowed by the admin user now let's try to access the other URL API get all user okay so as i have earlier logged in using the admin so that's why i'm able to get all the user over here okay so this is the thing like how we are able to okay one more point here like for actually accessing this one means enabling this one suppose if we use this pre-authorized annotation with this authority for this we need to uh, means enable use this particular annotations let me see this enable method security if we are not using this annotation then you are not able to actually get the benefit of this uh, um, this pre authorize it will not uh, working but for this one you need to use this enable method security annotation else it will not work so as you can see like uh, this is the kind of very small application so so that just i am briefly explain like how the authentication and the authorization is supported by the spring security so also like uh, you can uh, means uh, go to the over here the dependencies you can see like which version of the spring security it is let me show you as you can see the spring security config and all the version is six so it is uh, and also like spring boot 3 and uh, jdk 17 i have used so i will like uh, commit this particular thing into the github uh, in the description link uh, you will get the like link uh, from there you can download and all the things and in case like if you have any doubt or anything you can like in comment you can ask me so uh, like in the next uh, video i will like uh, provide how like as you can see like here for accessing all the means any endpoint we need to provide the username and uh, password like and but instead of that how can we like do in a more optimized way using jot token maybe in the next video i'll explain how we can do these things using the jot one so that like what we need to do instead of like uh, for every request we need to uh, passing the user authentication right so instead of that we need to pass only the token as a header basic token so this is a form login that we have explained here but instead of that i will in the next video i will share how we will use a jot token meantime enjoy and if you feel free to ask anything thank you